ES Audio. From the Evening Standard in London, I'm John Weeks and this is The Leader. As the month of January comes to a close, along with it comes the end of many month-long detoxes, resolutions and fads. But there's one that's been growing year on year, reaching record numbers of sign-ups and is seemingly having an impact on what we see on supermarket shelves and in restaurants. Yes, I'm talking about Veganuary. Since it started in 2014, when around 3,000 people signed up to do it, more than 2 million people have taken part in total. Now in its seventh official year, we're catching up with the man who started it all. Matthew Glover is founder of Veganuary, as well as MD of investment firm Veg Capital and founder of vegan fried chicken brand VFC. So Matthew, what do you put its success down to? Well, actually, funnily enough, me and Jane, my wife, who set it up, we, we stepped back about two or three years ago. So it must be because we've stepped back. <laughs> But no, I think uh, we've, we've got a really great team. Ria Rayberg, who's our CEO, she's based in Berlin and she's built a really strong team around her, which has really helped us professionalise and grow up as a campaign, if you like. And I think there's just a lot more interest in, in veganism, in taking part in something or at least exploring eating more plant-based foods. So I think that's really helped as well. So yeah, and we just learn every year from what we've done previously and prove it each year and uh, and hopefully we can keep growing it over the coming years. And there does seem to have been a real explosion of plant-based foods released over the past few years. Do you think that's helped? Funnily enough, when we started the campaign, we, we had no idea of how it would impact on the food scene. But I, you know, I think it's the thing that we're most proud of is that what's happened in terms of our reach within food businesses, food manufacturers, retailers have really embraced it, you know, so the amount of space that's allocated on the supermarket shelves now for vegan plant-based foods throughout the whole year is, is a lot better than it was eight, nine, ten years ago. Now, going forward, I know you're aiming for 600,000 sign-ups this year, but do you have an ultimate target for Veganuary? Do you want everyone to be doing it by a certain time? I used to joke, actually, back in 2014, if we keep doubling every year, by 2028, everyone in the world would be doing Veganuary. But realistically, to be able to continue doubling gets harder the bigger you get. So, yeah, I mean, ultimately, we're not going to stop until the whole world is eating significant portions of, if not all, plant-based vegan food. So we'll keep plugging away at it. I mean, ultimately, what we need to do is just keep growing the campaign and doing the same things, but doing it more effectively on a bigger scale. So we want more people next year to take part. We want more food brands to join us and develop more products. We want to reach more people through the media Every year in January, it is the time where the mainstream media talk about it a lot more. So, you know, we need to keep doing that. And then we need to do what we've done in the UK and and really take it to other territories. So until we've cracked the US, I'm certainly not going to be fully satisfied. Now, over the years, there has been some sort of backlash from farmers and farming groups who've tried to create their own campaigns to counter Veganuary. What do you make of those? They've all tended to be a failure, I would say. Ebra dairy didn't really work out. I think this year we've seen Regenuary, about regenerative agriculture. But look, all I would say is anybody go to our world in data and look at the environmental impact of food. And I wish the farming community would look at that as well, because there is this argument that they have that eating locally produced grass-fed beef is better than imported foods that are coming from from other countries but the science the research the data strongly suggests that the impacts are at the farm level and it's not so much in terms of processing and distribution and packaging they're relatively small impacts in terms of environment so that the big impacts are at the farm level so it really means the more we move towards plant-based foods then we can free up a lot more land for nature We can tackle climate change a lot more effectively. Yeah, I understand that farmers feel under threat, but vegans, you know, we still need farmers. We eat the produce as well from the farming community. So it's it's not that we have a problem with farmers. It's just we think that the product range needs to change ultimately. 
Now on the evidence so far, with that rise in the number of sign-ups over the last few years, it does look like people's perceptions around food are changing. Do you think Veganuary has had a role in that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, we don't, we don't ask people to go vegan. We ask them to give it a go for a month. Um, so, you know, at the end of January and into early February, we find that there is a proportion of people that stick with it. It's quite a high proportion of people that, that actually have enjoyed it so much that they decide not to go back to their previous food choices. But there's a lot of people will go back to eating animal products, but maybe less so. So, for example, if you've been used to your whole life drinking cow's milk and putting that on your cereals and then you've tried oat milk for, for the month of January, a lot of people feel that they actually prefer that and they continue using that and they'll find different products, whatever it could be. So. That is then meant that we've got more people buying plant-based foods throughout the year. So I think we've definitely played a part, but it, it's not just Veganuary. There's a lot of other activists, a lot of groups, a lot of campaigns, and a lot of food manufacturers as well. There's a lot of investment going into this space as well, which is meaning that the availability and price and the taste of plant-based products are improving year on year. We're not quite there yet. Cheese is a bit of an issue. There's some great vegan cheeses out there. But, you know, a lot of people actually say, you know, I could go vegan, but it's just the cheese, Matthew. And have you got an insider insight into the vegan cheese world? Is there anything going on that's ultra realistic that you know of? I think the secret ingredient in dairy cheese is, is casein. And that gives it that sort of stringy texture and the addictiveness. So there are people working on precision fermentation to be able to produce casein in a plant based way. And I think once that technology starts finding its way into to the hands of food manufacturers, I think the quality of the plant-based cheeses will improve dramatically. But we're getting there anyway without it. And um, it's certainly a lot better than it was five, ten years ago, for sure. Now, I did want to mention London to you because it seems to be one of the big cities to really embrace vegan food. Have you noticed that as well? Yeah, London is our biggest city in the world for, for Veganuary. So, I mean, I think... We've always put a focus on it. I mean, six, seven years ago, we were advertising on the underground carriages. So I think that really helped uh, raise awareness for Veganuary. And I think the people in London are, um, are more sort of open-minded to eating vegan plant-based than, than other parts of, of the UK, certainly. I grew up in Wakefield in West Yorkshire, and it's a bit of a desert for, for vegan <laughs> veganism, to be honest. But yeah, no, I think... Um, Culturally, people are a lot more open minded and there's a big scene, obviously, there. And, you know, I see it whenever I do come down, the amount of vegan signs that I see in shop windows. It's just amazing. And that's it from The Leader. This podcast is back on Monday at 4 p.m.